Okay. So for this third and final session of the robotics lab sessions. Uh, now previously you guys have looked into AV Robot Studio and st doing stuff on the Arduino with Tinkercad. Now those refer more to the application bit of robotics. Like in ABV Robot Studio, you guys were given a robot and what you had to do was simulate how that robot would work when you're giving it some commands or like when it, when college will reopen in the lab, you will be actually giving commands to the robot through the teach pendant and the robot will be doing it. Now the other side of robotics is actually making the robots and by making the robots, of course you have design and all, but more importantly, you have mathematical modeling and simulation stuff. Now doing that takes a lot of work, especially if you're doing this, let's say not, not by hand, obviously. I mean, no one's a massachist here, are we? <laughs> but uh, if say you're using some sort of calculation, let's say you're using a simple calculator to do stuff. Now uh, to visualize your inputs and all, of course you can program it, but it's cumbersome. Now. I'll be talking about uh, uh, something called as MATLAB, which I think everyone knows what MATLAB is. And uh, is my screen visible? Yeah, it is. Yeah. Visible. yeah. Okay. Now, I, MATLAB actually uh, the full form of MATLAB stands for Matrix Laboratory. And the reason uh, it, so MATLAB was initially designed specifically with like name suggest with matrix operations in mind because initially it was uh, meant to be a tool for researchers to work with big data like say image processing or uh, image processing or data science stuff like that and of course now it's branched into a lot of things like financial analytics uh, functional programming even uh, iot like we have uh, multiple add-ons in matlab which deal with specific fields like you've got one which deals with ROS, one which deals with uh, symbolic math where you don't enter uh, values into the into the equations that you're doing you work with abstract variables so many tools And no, just be showing. OK, I think I just dropped out for a minute there. OK, yeah, is the screen still visible? Yeah, yeah it is. OK, OK. Yeah. So I'll just be showing you some basic commands on what um, like just to show you what MATLAB can actually do. So if you notice it's it works very much like sort of like your calculator or if you're typing simple stuff in program so a simple variable assignment like let's say x equals to 2 or like uh, x equals to let's say you want to make your you're writing coordinates right uh, x y coordinates so point a you would write it as normally as 1 comma 2 so stuff like that is very intuitive and comes very easily like to you when you're programming MATLAB and also uh, MATLAB as the platform. Now the there are a lot of other things that you can do other than just basic calculations that I'm showing you like I could uh, do let's say uh, X squared so four so stuff like that simple mathematical calculations. And apart from this, the I would say the more uh, advanced features of MATLAB come with like, the toolboxes that it has. Now I'll just show you before that I'll just show you some simple visualization applications of MATLAB. Now let's say that I want to plot uh, say y equals x cube. So what I what I'll do here is I'll first define a range of what uh, a range of values that I want to put in that function that y equals x cube function. So I could manually type everything like you. OK, so you will notice that I'm creating an array here essentially in computer programming terms. Now I can actually type out every single value like one, two, three and so on. But this is tedious in case I want to type say 1000 values. So a neat function or neat method that MATLAB has 
is using the colon operator. Now, what this colon operator does is, if people, are, if any of you is familiar with Python, you'll also notice the colon operator there. What it does is, it creates a range of values from at the lower limit, which here I'm specifying as one, to an upper limit, which over here is thousand. And okay, now you'll also notice that when I press enter, I got this big load of big output, and over here. Putting a, when you type anything, you when you type a command in MATLAB, whatever output that the command gets is automatically outputted into this command window over here. Now you can suppress that output by typing semicolon. So if I were to do the same command again, and I were to press semicolon, nothing is going to happen. Now you'll also notice that all the variables that I created that I have used uh, throughout the session will be updated in this workspace over here. And this is uh, in a way if you've uh, if any of you are familiar with uh, the Jupyter notebook, this is kind of a, this is kind of similar to that in that you can actually view the variables as uh, after you execute each command. There's a uh, if any of you are familiar with how Jupyter Notebook works, you can uh, view the variables after you've say executed each set of commands like over here. So if I double click on this, it'll show me the list of all the values that have that have entered over here, the one to 1000 range. And if I were to, let's say, plot this thing. Yeah, so for first I'll create the function itself. Y equals X square, uh, X cube, right? Now you'll notice that this gives me an error. Now, why is that? Because I mean, logically this should make sense, right? The uh, the values of X that I'm giving, I should cube them. Now this is another aspect of MATLAB that uh, is actually very useful. And this is the distinction between matrix operations and well, normal operations. When I have, let's say a matrix called uh, Let's say a simple square matrix one, two. So, so I've typed the first row to get the second row of uh, the matrix. I'll use semicolon. Now, if I use comma, it's just separating the elements of the row. And if I use semicolon, it goes to the other row. So if I just say type three and four, you'll notice you get a two by two matrix. Now, if I were to say make another matrix with uh, OK, uh, you guys give me some values that I can put. I want a two by two matrix, so give me any values. What about uh, 0, 1, 1, 0? 0, 1, 1, 0. Uh, OK. Now, if I were to do normal, like normal multiplication of A into B, this does normal matrix multiplication. So it's what one into zero plus two into one. So two simple enough to understand. But if I do a into B, but before this asterisk over here, I put a dot. You'll notice an entirely different set of values comes. Now this is because this dot specifies to MATLAB that what we're doing is not a matrix related operation, but a element specific operation. So you'll notice that so A is one, B is zero. The dot specification, what it does is it will multiply each, uh, it will multiply the corresponding elements together. So this will be one into zero, two into one, three into zero. Yeah, three into one, sorry, and four into zero, which is why we got this. And this is also a reason why this command over here failed because X is essentially a matrix, a one into thousand matrix. So this is analogous to performing X to X, which if you know your matrix multiplication doesn't work because the dimensions don't add up. So I'll be using the element wise operation on that. And how I can do that is X dot raised to three. And I didn't suppress my output, so this came. Now, 
if I want to plot this, now I have my range of values X and I have Y, which is the output mm. of that. Neha, uh, uh, I think your screen is frozen. Range. Yeah. Your screen is frozen. Oh, it's frozen. One minute. Yeah. Okay, how about now? Yeah. Is it written now? Yeah. Okay. Yep. All right. So if I were to plot, let's say if I wanted to plot X and Y. Now this is as simple as typing out plot, specifying the X axis. So plot is a function. So hence the parenthesis. Uh, specifying the X axis, which is X, so all the values of X and the output. Now, when I press enter, maybe because uh, I've shared just a MATLAB screen, you won't see it, but give me a moment to dock it. And yeah, this is how the function will look when you plot it. And you can also do a lot of stuff with this plot. Like mm -hmm. I can select specific numbers over here. So ways you can interact with the graph. And not only this, I can also change properties of the graph itself. Now, for example, if I were to uh, do the same thing, let's say plot X and Y, but I want to change the color of this line to let's say black or red, I'll change it to red. So I can add this modify over here. Now MATLAB, ha each function in MATLAB has various modifiers that depending on what value you put or like what uh, characters you put, it changes the behavior of that function to fit uh, what visualization you're looking for. So in the case of this plot function, you have options for changing the color of the line, changing the type of line, and also putting markers for every data point that I've entered. So in the, by data point, I'm referring to the name ranges that are contained in X and Y. So you'll get a data point at uh, X equals to one, Y equals to one, uh, X equals to two, Y equals to eight, so on. So in this case, if I want to, if I want to change the color of the graph to red, I can do that. If I want to, yeah. And also one more feature is since I, I'll be using plot again and again right now. So I can either type it out again or I can press the up arrow. So this is if you, if you've probably ex, uh, looked into, if you've probably opened the command uh, window or let's say terminal in your, uh, in your computer, you probably know this, uh, operation where you press the up arrow and the last executed command comes here automatically. In the case of MATLAB, if you press the up arrow, it shows all the commands that you've executed in this session. So right from the start of the session over here, you can see that I did X equal to two and X equal to X plus two. And mm -hmm. it, also, it also shows a bit of the previous sessions also like five days ago, I was trying something out with one of the community toolboxes, which is also uh, which, which are also very useful. Like apart from the official MATLAB toolboxes, you also have toolboxes made by the community to help with specific use cases. For example, there is this one toolbox which uh, helps you integrate with an Arduino like directly. MATLAB doesn't have that officially, but uh, you have community toolboxes that help you integrate with RPIs, Arduinos, uh, specific equipment and so on. So since I want to execute the plot command again. I'll just press up arrow and then I'll also add say, let's say I want to uh, change the data points to circles. So I'll, pre I'll press O and you notice that this is become very thick line. But if I zoom in, let's see if I can. Yeah, here we go. You notice that each point is now a circle. And if I were to let's say I can change this also if I were to make it a single point. And zoom in again. I'm using the scroll wheel right now to zoom in. So you notice it's changed to dots. I can also now if I want to change the line, the type of line I can if I want to let's say make a dashed line, I can do double dash over here and it'll change into a dash line. So these are the these are the various uh, ways you can like visualize graphs in MATLAB. Now 
let's say that now this is just like one function that i'm graphing over here what if i want to graph say multiple multiple uh, multiple functions now this y was x cube now if i wanted to say graph some sort of polynomial uh, say z equals to x um cube no okay, square oh okay you guys suggest a polynomial that i can graph here uh, x square plus 2x plus uh, 1 y i guess if you why okay that also works uh yeah all right uh, let me just suppress the output okay now you'll notice that i forgot to put the asterisk over here but okay and also here because it's a matrix there you now if i'll plot okay now you notice that if i just plot this as it is the initial plot will disappear and that is because uh, what plot does is it overrides the initial figure but if i wanted to say um, put both the things in the same put both the functions in the same graph there is a there is a function called hold which i'll be demonstrating in a moment so first i'll Oh, sorry for this stuff. Yeah. So if I were to, so I'll just do the first uh, function x y. I'll do it in red. Now I'll be using the hold on command. And what this does is all further plot uh, operations that I'll be doing will be done in this figure itself. So I it won't override the figure or or let's say create a new figure for this graphing that I'm doing right now. I'll just plot x and z now in say black. No, the command for black is k. And why is it going over the same graph? Oh, right. One moment. Ah, there it is. <laughs> I thought it went off somewhere. Yeah. So this is the the plot that I just made right now, and you'll notice that it didn't overwrite it because I still have the hold on command enabled. Now, if I were to the deactivate this command, hold off, and then plot the same thing again, x z, it'll revert back because it'll overwrite everything. Now, apart from this, like this is just the plotting stuff. You can also create more um, you can also kind of annotate your graph like say i want to create labels for the x and y axes and even a uh, legend legend as in uh, you know the tables that you see in each graph it tells you that this color line refers to this value this color line refers to this value etc so i can i can use the the following commands over here x label which uh, so let's say values of x yeah of x and you notice it updated over here and for y label i can do let's say function output and for the legend i can legend over here since there is just one uh, function line that's being plotted over here i just need to enter the description for that so um finish function one there you, and it came up over here i can now you notice that the legend box is cutting into the graph here and right now is not a problem but if you have multiple uh, graphs over here it might pose a problem so you can also select where you want the box to be placed so i'll just do this thing again 
function one and i'll be specifying the location and it detects locations using compass direction so north i wanted in this corner which is north west so i'll go northwest so what i'm showing right now is probably the most basic stuff that uh, you probably ever use for matlab when you're trying out normal stuff but apart from this the most i mean what i'm doing right now is very tedious to do like or at on the go like if i have a preset of uh, uh, if i have some preset commands that i know that i have to do like let's say this entire plotting thing i'd have to type each command one over and over again so one good way one way that you can uh, save in a way save all these commands is using something called a live script now what a live script does is essentially it it's a way for you to uh, list all the commands that you're typing here and along with that you can also create descriptions for each command so it's like programming with with like comments but instead of like comments showing up in gray text alongside your code you can actually create uh, like stuff like headings and all so let me just show one example example I'll put some code over here. X equals y. Okay, x equals two one. Y equals x square. I'll add some more text. Writing stuff. So I can do this endlessly. And of course, you can also format this too over here. I'll just sample script. Plotting stuff, stuff like that, and you notice that each code block can is like it is shown here differently, and you can also execute these blocks separately, like uh, the Jupyter notebook again. You, like you have separate, uh, you, if you notice that this looks very similar to the Jupyter notebook in that you can uh, execute separate uh, cells, like over here. I'm in this section right now, so when I press run section, it'll update this correspondingly. If I were to say uh, do x equal to three here and run this section, so we'll update this. I can also run the entire script at once by pressing this run button. And why this is useful is like first of all, like I said, if you have a set of commands that you want to do, it, it, you can just put that in a live script and run the entire thing when you want. And also another uh, like this is probably related to the academics bit. But the stuff that you have right now, the stuff that you're learning right now, whatever, let's say math or even say robotics, right? The robotics math that you're doing, you can make scripts that enable you to perform operations on whatever you're doing and you can run them in one time. So for example, you're doing some homogeneous transformations, right? You can create, you can create a, a script beforehand wherein you can enter what let's say let's say your initial frame is rotating by some degrees theta and then translating by some a uh, distance x so you can create a script beforehand where you just need to enter what the what the theta is and what the x is and you put this put it in the live script and the live script will give you the matrix answer whatever uh, answer you're looking for and it can even like you can even show you a visualization of how that frame Will look before and after the translation. So that 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 is something that I I leave that as an exercise to you for you to explore. To get started with MATLAB, or uh, Ma the MathWorks website. Okay, before that you would need to get MATLAB or like access MATLAB. I'm I'm sure that uh, I think you guys have been in, um, intimated regarding how to use your learner ID to get a license, but if not, I'll put a, there's this one set of instructions that I'll put on the, maybe the team or the WhatsApp group where you can avail of the license, the campus license using your learner ID. And after that, uh, the MathWorks website has a set of self-paced courses uh, called OnRamp. So you have MATLAB OnRamp and you also have Simulink OnRamp, which I haven't shown here. Uh, Simulink is, you could say, a, 
it's 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 a model it's a modeling you could say ecosystem where the stuff that i'm doing right now you can do it graphically in simlink by defining let's say certain blocks it's like a flowchart kind of thing you'll find it mostly being used by uh, electrical engineers because there's a lot of control system stuff that is being done in simlink and that helps them a lot so even the next semester when you'll be doing linear control theory lct you'll be using it's it, it it's better if you use simlink and also the control systems toolbox in matlab so these two uh, things will help you a lot i'd also recommend you go through the entire list of toolboxes that matlab has uh, because there are uh, quite a few toolboxes that are uh, essential to you right now like if in case you are interested in robotics you have uh, the official uh, matlab toolbox called robotics systems toolbox and you also have this uh, one uh, toolbox called simscape or simscape multibody which allows you to actually simulate uh, whatever mechanism or uh, robotic mechanism that you are uh, implementing and yeah that's about it for like a demonstration of matlab uh, this what i've actually showed is very basic but uh, like i said it's better if you explore it on your own Hey, uh, is there uh, are there any subjects that specifically require the use of MATLAB? No, no, no. You can you can uh, do it. So so. Uh, no, actually no. Short answer no. But I would say that for LCT you will require it because I mean I mean aside from the it's not like required to understand it, uh, but uh, the concepts are very. you would say difficult to i mean difficult is an understatement actually lct is very uh, horrible uh, to study because of the sheer complexity of the concepts and all that other and i will t- uh, and like i'm speaking from experience here using matlab actually help me visualize a lot of stuff because you have these weird plots that you actually have to draw manually okay so you have stuff like uh, root locus plots and board plots that you actually have to draw manually now pehle to understanding the steps is only a headache in itself but using matlab you can kind of visualize your thought process as to how um, how that thing actually works okay i see so at the moment uh, i mean uh, in my opinion where matlab will like directly help you is like at the moment is first world robotics of course because of all the matrix operations and all uh you can use matlab for maths also like the numerical methods and stuff that you're having you can use it there also um uh, and uh, even dsd now there is uh, something i mean there is in simlink you have something called you have some things uh, the first is called state flow which is uh i don't know if you studied that far yet but in dsd you have something called mini machines and all which are essentially state based uh, like uh, yeah yeah state based uh, uh, what's the thing <laughs> well, i forgot the word uh, yeah state based application things chips chips or circuits yeah so state flow allows you to model the mini machines and everything and even uh, the the initial part that you have your qm method and all you can do that in matlab it's a very horrible script and i would have given it to you but unfortunately i have lost it so you'll have to uh, make the script by yourself i that script is actually very useful i used it uh, while i was studying for qm method so what i would do is i used to do it manually and then enter the same table in matlab to cross check my answer and with steps so i made a live script for the uh, qm thing and it showed me step wise outputs so you can do that too the fun little project and yeah apart from that you can also uh, in a way uh, model stuff model like even analog circuits like in, in dsd the digital circuits that you have the chips and all you can model that in simlink and even uh, what's the other subject that you have uh, the one which uh, jennifer ma'am teaches i think uh sensors and algorithm ah ha yeah uh, sai so uh, you also have something called simscape electrical 
which it, it's more of uh, like hardcore electrical stuff but it also has analog uh, circuit uh, like blocks which you can utilize in simscape so like amplifiers and everything you can utilize that in your simlink models to make stuff Any other questions about like MATLAB and Simlink? Uh, uh, bro, can we use MATLAB online? Oh yeah, definitely. Like, uh, of course, I forgot to mention this. Uh, MATLAB is a very big application. Like the basic, like getting the minimum minimum requirement, the minimum required stuff like mat, just MATLAB, core MATLAB, and Simlink, and a few other compulsory toolboxes that MATLAB gives. It's a hefty 10, 11 GB, and if you like add more toolboxes, I would say the average installation size is like about 20 to 25. The maximum, like if you if 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 you're if you're mad and you want to install everything, the entire thing is like 50 GB or so. So I would say it's not something that uh, you would that I would recommend like downloading every single toolbox. But uh, you can also, in case you don't want to download MATLAB, you can also use MATLAB online, which you can access once again from the MathWorks website. You'll have to still create your donor ID and all so that you can uh, access it too. And uh, the online version is pretty good. But I think, I mean, they, they actually have a set of uh, limitations that uh, you can that you can actually browse through. Like there are some some edge cases that probably don't work. But one thing that you won't be able to do is uh, use the community toolboxes. And now I don't know whether you can even use the official toolboxes in MATLAB online. I've never tried uh, doing that, but uh, that is like one limitation that you can't use the community toolboxes and that is i in my opinion it's a glaring drawback because there are a lot of community not just like or uh, not just ones that you see on the matlab uh, like marketplace but also stuff that people have made now for example if i were to give you an example uh, on Coursera, there is this one robotics specialization called modern modern robotics. It's taught by uh, Northwestern University, and they have their own MATLAB toolbox, which they ask you to download to like help you through the duration of the course. Now you can't use that if you're using MATLAB online. You'll actually have to download MATLAB proper to use it. But aside from that, for simple operations, you can use uh, MATLAB online. Like you can even in a way create live scripts and use it over there. I think you can save it also. Not sure about that. But yeah, you can use MATLAB online. Uh, quick question. What's the difference between MATLAB and Simulink? OK, so all right, I might as well show you. Now this stuff is like just MATLAB, MATLAB, where you uh, program stuff and you get outputs and all. Now, if I were to uh, like talk about Simulink, just give it a moment. Now, Simulink is a like a totally different ecosystem from MATLAB, and the what it specializes in is graphical programming, which, as the name suggests, is literally like doing putting uh, so. If any of you are familiar with Scratch or like heard of Scratch, it's very similar to that. I mean, if if you've seen Tinkercad, you probably have seen that you have two uh, like methods of entering code, right? One is like actually coding the stuff, and the other one is the you have like little code blocks and stuff which you do. Now, Simlink kind of works in the same way, and just give me a moment to share that. OK, it's uh, creating a blank model. Now you'll notice that that just the background you there's a lot of. Uh, it's mostly elect 
electronics related like uh, if in let's say you're doing control systems right like i mentioned lct uh, may you have the control systems toolbox and all so you would use symlink a lot because uh, i mean to be fair it's easier to do that stuff in uh, symlink rather than in matlab you can do it in matlab but uh, it's very tedious in a way i'll just show you a few examples uh no uh, symlink has a lot of uh, like block sets which are uh, mm. specific to a specific uh, let's say field now for digital for dsd you have the digital block set and for for uh, uh, the sai or next semester you'll be doing a uh, linear integrated circuits and applications lika they come under asd so that also has its own block set so if i were to show you some simple stuff just give it give a moment for the thing to load yeah okay so i just opened the library browser here selected a block and dropped it over here now this is a very uh, kiddie block is just a constant uh, but uh, there are a lot of other blocks that you can actually use over here i'll just pull a few over here just to show uh, you have and gates also so you can do dsd stuff in this switches for like electrical circuits so symlink is more of a uh, like circuit or uh, graphic simulator thing right okay any other questions uh in simulink we can edit values using matlab also right like using matlab yeah, script yeah uh, so uh, you can uh, i don't remember the specifics but you can export a simulink model as uh, matlab code actually uh, you can uh, simulink and model uh, simulink and matlab are integrated in the way in the sense that you can use let's say matlab workspace variables in symlink or symlink stuff you can uh, yeah. visualize it in matlab in uh, simlink there is a block known as to workspace right like i have done it so and so we can connect uh -huh. it yeah, yeah so and what that does is uh, let's say any uh, if you are doing some sort of uh, simulation and i think it in, in mostly apply to digital uh, simulations because they have like specific values so if you use a two workspace block what it will do is uh, of course you specify the destination variable and it will project that uh, thing into the matlab workspace where you can use that variable to work on other let's say a script that that variable has plays a part in and like to take if you want to like take the integration to its logical conclusion you have these really big integrations where uh, so uh, i would suggest you look at um, how uh, formula student uses uh, not formula money pal i'm talking about formula student like the entire uh, group of uh, student formula uh, competition teams what they do is they use uh, matlab and symlink in like in sync where uh, the scripts that they work on uh, affect more the the environmental variables in symlink and the output of that model is once again brought back into matlab so it's a very i mean i wouldn't say it's beautiful it's a hot mess i mean it's it's a storm it's a storm of values and variables but yeah it's pretty interesting to like watch in action and matlab uh, math works rather has this set of uh, has this you could say set of videos and everything on their website where they show you specific use cases like the robotics uh, arena has uh, videos explaining how to use robotic systems to box or the racing lounge has uh, uh, videos how to use the uh, simscape related stuff like the automobile related stuff where you can simulate automobile systems and all
Anything else? Oh, hey, is uh, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, uh, yeah. Is it yeah? Is it worth learning uh, other libraries like uh, Matplotlib? You know, with yeah, Python? yeah, definitely, definitely. Or, I mean, yeah. I would say definitely. Like, is, will it get confusing for us if we learn both? No, 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 like Matlab Actually, and that. Uh, so, uh, like uh, when it comes to the confusing bit, I would say that the the self-paced courses that Mat works has actually cover a lot of the basics of matter like for example uh, so uh, like to tell you about the learning process uh, you have matlab on ramp on ramp and simlink on ramp which are like short one two hour courses which teach you about the bare basics now apart from that because of our campus uh, license uh, matlab also has specific courses which address specific toolboxes like for example you have a course on deep learning a course on uh, a matlab fundamental which am i think uh, course i think where you do everything that can be done in core matlab so by the end of it you uh, you will be a wizard in core matlab now and apart from that you have like like i mentioned the robotics arena explains how the robotics system toolbox works and stuff like that and when it comes to the use cases of matlab i would say that uh, okay apart from like as an engineer apart from being apart from mechatronics as an engineer it's important to learn uh, learn matlab because uh, like later on in your masters they it's it helps you a lot and even like not just uh, for Uh, not just uh, masters related stuff if you want to do any sort of research in any specific field like uh, any any field rather matlab helps you a lot because you don't have to code stuff yourself like imagine you wanted to do some ai project right but you don't have the know how to create a model from scratch you you can use matlab's toolboxes it even has a reinforcement learning toolbox like it has a uh, deep learning toolbox machine learning toolbox and reinforcement learning toolbox so you can use uh, the the libraries that matlab has to like implement it in your own project and so it is going to be good because it improve your skills as an engineer also and later on in companies like core tech companies use matlab a lot matlab uh, wolfram mathematica and a few other um, Uh, softwares like uh, la even labview so it's a good skill to have i'd say which are the toolbox you get uh, you recommend you. to get for like a new person to matlab can you repeat uh what are the toolbox you recommend for a person who's new to matlab to get at least in our case okay that would actually depend on what uh, field you are interested in doing stuff in so uh, like okay so like matlab so if 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 you want just a general overview uh things to get would be i mean of course core matlab and core simlink those are default they come with the matlab installation uh symbolic math which is like what i did right now i inputted values for x and y and all right so symbolic math may you don't have to do it you just have abstract variables which you can play around with uh symbolic math or uh, differential equations um statistics yeah machine learning and statistics then um, control systems toolbox because i mean it it will help you in your lct at least uh there are actually a lot of uh, toolbox which i don't remember off the bat so i would recommend you check out the list of toolboxes uh, on the website so this is there uh, for if for the ai oriented people you can look at uh, the ros toolbox uh, like deep learning reinforcement learning toolbox for mac oriented people you can um, look at yeah uh, you can look at simscape simscape drive line simscape multi body uh, simscape is sort of a, a, sim, a simlink branch of like simlink matlab hybrid thing and uh, yeah for electronics people it's almost for most part is mostly simlink stuff that you would want to look to like simlink electrical control systems to box uh, you have an hdl coder where you can code stuff in verilog hdl uh, yeah 
so yeah i would say that on the whole these are the toolboxes i'd recommend there are many more which i don't like remember off the bat so i'd recommend you go through the list of like official toolboxes first that they have on the matlab marketplace like the descriptions they'll help you make a better informed decision as to what uh, use cases each toolbox addresses and uh, of course you can also look at the community toolboxes uh like if i to give you some examples i mentioned one arduino toolbox which you can use uh, as for the uh, robotics oriented ones i mentioned one the cosera one uh, the uh, modern robotics wala and there is also another toolbox uh, made by this uh, one uh, australian professor uh, his name is peter cork so p e t r t e r c o r k e uh his is more towards the image processing bit so he's he's his toolbox is a combination of robotics maths like the exactly the one that you're doing right on robotics one the, the home user transformation stuff and all uh, combined with image processing so if you're interested in the computer vision bit you can look at his toolbox too so yeah these are most of the community toolboxes that i remember off the bat you can check online for other community toolboxes too you can install toolboxes after you install matlab right like separately yeah yeah actually you don't need to even install a toolbox for it to work like for example if i were to show you again uh yeah you, you see the uh, folder on the left uh, mr so this is the cosera uh, matlab toolbox and i actually didn't have to uh, do any sort of quote and quote installation also uh, what okay so what happens is uh, default matlab toolboxes get integrated into its def- into the uh, matlab thing directly but because community toolboxes are external files you will have to define a path for uh, matlab to access it now what i have done here is i have made a folder called matlab in my documents folder where i where i stuffed all my community toolboxes and using the set path option i have specified that this variable is also where matlab should look for libraries or toolboxes and all so it's very easy to integrate community toolboxes and also sometimes uh, some toolboxes have a installer as such like it's just a file uh, you double click it and it opens up in matlab and installs the thing directly so you don't have to worry about that too and uh, nihal at 655 i think we should wrap up okay yeah yeah all right so thank you guys for coming it was a good like one month of uh, online sessions like this is take our last online session but uh, we are always like the seniors we seniors are always there if you need any like technical help or like st- help out helping out with academics and all and to that end we have a discord server with the entire department like uh, second years third years fourth years and also a couple alumni so i'd recommend you join the discord server so that we can all keep in touch and we also have a lot of other channels with which relate to like specific interests like ai computer vision electric vehicles uh, gaming anime uh, <laughs> cricket so it load loads of other stuff so you can interact with the seniors like get help related to anything and yeah that's about it